Hey, what's going on guys? IO Studios here from the video. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up Motion Blur in Cinema 4D and Octane, as well as going over a few of the settings and what they do. Let's get started. So you can see here, my scene is just a cube moving across the floor. For the lighting, I've just got a little studio light set up here, um, loaded as an HDRI, but you can use really any lighting. It's, it's not important to the scope of this video. So we have this object here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to pick everything that we're going to um, want Motion Blur on. And, you know, in this case, just the box. So we're going to click on the box, right-click, we're going to go C4D Octane, add an Octane object tag. And um, we don't need to do anything else here. We're, we're done in there. We just need to uh, make sure that there's an Octane tag on it. Now, uh, we're going to add an, an Octane camera. Head into it here. Oh, there we go. And in the Motion Blur tab here, right next to Basic and Thin Lens, you want to enable it. So just hit Enable, right? But when we play this, nothing happens. There's no motion blur. It's it's perfectly sharp, right? So that's when they change the shutter speed, like a normal camera works, all right? The, um, the higher the shutter speed is in this case, uh, it will be more blurry. We set it to a value of 0 0.39. It's quite blurry. If we turn it down, less blurry, turn it down, less blurry, turn it all the way up. If you turn it all the way up, it has a weird reverse effect where it just like, you don't want to turn it above one, all right? If it, even like above 0.5 almost looks kind of weird. So I try and keep it, you know, usually I'd go around like 0.3 usually, right? Maybe if you're going to stream like 0.4, but don't set it too high. It's just going to look really weird. All right, we're going to set it to 0.2. Now we'll set it a little lower. All right, time shift. This is going to be kind of telling uh, Octane if we want to look at the motion blur kind of ahead of time. Like, do we want the motion blur to be kind of ahead of the object? Or do we want the motion blur to be kind of lagging behind the object? Usually you just want this at zero, but you know, there's times when you'd want it to be either behind or in front. But anyway, now the motion blur cache frames, this is kind of like a, um, not the quality of the motion blur, but how much information the motion blur takes into account. So if it's, um, now it's set to 25, that means it's going to be looking 25 frames backwards in the time. It's going to be looking 25 frames backwards in the timeline. Um, to kind of calculate the current motion blur. So if your object is just moving in a straight direction like this, you can set this to three or like something and it's it going to be fine. Like watch. I mean, this looks just fine. There's really no problems here. I mean, even turning this up all the way to like, I'll crank it up to like 38. It doesn't have any benefit, but if the thing was maybe zigzagging back and forth or had changing colors and stuff, then, you know, you'd probably want to set that a little higher. And anyway, we'll just set all our ours to like, we can set ours to five because, you know, it's just a very linear movement, but that's going to, you know, depend on your scene. Anyway, shutter alignment. Um, now, this is again not very, you usually don't want to change this. It's kind of like the time shift um, before, centered, after. Uh, before is going to have like pretty much the, the most realistic motion blur. Um, you can play around with these. I'm not really sure their purpose. But just set it to before and it'll be fine. Now the final setting here, disable camera motion blur. Um, basically what this is, if we keyframe our camera right here, right? Let's say I keyframe the camera to move, right? We set up our, our camera right here. Keyframe it there. Keyframe it there. Camera moves across this theme. Now what you're going to notice is that the edges here are blurred, right? Because even though this object, the floor is not moving, the camera is moving relative to the floor. If you want to disable that, you can enable that. And what that will do is Octane will not consider how the camera is moving. And it'll only consider, or not, it'll not consider how the camera is moving relative to other objects. It'll only consider how other objects are moving relative to themselves. So this floor is not moving. We're not going to blur it. This cube is moving. We're going to blur it. This is very useful. I usually disable camera and blur because if I want motion blur on an object, I choose to do so with the tag, right? You know, if I'm moving my camera, I don't want everything in the scene to be blurry. Um, so that's why for the most part, you want to probably uh, disable that. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. There's no really quality slider for the motion blur other than the, uh, the cache frames. But like, Octane does a really good job of motion blur. Um, it does it very quickly. It, it almost doesn't render any slower than the shadow even. So... Like, yeah, 
Arcane Emotion Blur, very powerful tool that you definitely want to understand and you know just play around with it. Use different objects, different settings, really get a good feeling for how how it affects the scene and stuff. But um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to end the tutorial. I hope everyone enjoyed and uh, have a good day. Bye.